Hey, and a very warm welcome to the Into the Light Web podcast with me, your hostess, Joanna Hunter, metaphysical teacher, spiritual life and business coach, published author, and the high priestess of the Light Web, a spiritual technology that will change your life. This is the place to be to talk everything under the Light Web from consciousness, relationships, to money, to spiritual business, and everything in between. Hi and a warm welcome, it's Joanna Hunter here for the Into the Light Web podcast and we have got another episode on the Million Dollar Lab series and I am joined by the gorgeous Jacqueline today. Come and introduce yourself Jacqueline. Thank you, I am very excited to be here with you from the other side of the pond, bringing value to the audience uh, in any way that we can. My name is Jackie Camacho Ruiz, and I'm a, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I have been an entrepreneur since the age of 23. I have published 24 books under my name since 2010. I've also traveled to four, four continents, uh, sharing inspiration and spreading the light, <laughs> you know, no pun intended, with the name of your beautiful podcast, and um, uh, I became one of the few Latina sports airplane pilots in the United States um, after really waking up to uh, two scares uh, with cancer at the age of 21 and 23, uh, learning English and German, you know, coming to the United States in just one year, and uh, creating two nonprofit organizations, one in the States and one in Mexico, um, but really all that, uh, you know, all those sort of accomplishments uh, go back to the source, which is being a servant leader. That's what drives me day in and day out and uh, my sense of urgency to serve. So I love me. that. I love that because I think I find so many high achieving women have got this service mindset of really showing up and making the world a better place, doing you know something that helps other people and sometimes usually we find even you know because you you've had I mean it, let's just dig into some of this that you've just already shared with us but you know to have two scan cancer scares at 21 and 23 that's huge you know that's got to massively shift your perspective because usually at 21 we're 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 into you know we're it's all about the love life and going out with friends and stuff. And suddenly you've got the, the facing mortality in a way and going through that. Did that have a profound effect on your life? Absolutely. I don't think, um, I don't think I've ever been the same since I've heard that word. Um, I, um, I had gotten married uh, pretty young and, um, you know, uh, the prospect of having children really excited me. And uh, one of the first things that I was faced with, not only that word um, and just really, like you said, facing my own you know, mortality, because that's the first thing you think about, but also the prospect of not being able to have children, uh, which was, you know, the big thing on the table. And, um, and, you know, I took everything I had because I had been exposed to amazing literature since I was a little girl. You know, I started reading at the age of four, um, part of it kindergarten, part of it on my own. Uh, my cousin still reminds me, he's like, wow, I was so impressed that you were reading at that age. And then I started absorbing amazing books from Dale Carnegie, Napoleon Hill, Zig Ziglar, you know, just timeless, amazing principles that create a mindset of success. And I could not wait to grow a little older, a little bit more mature, a little independent, autonomous, to be able to apply those principles in my life. And, and you know, at 21, I had, you know, pretty much uh, the first official, you know, big test of my life. And mm. I had to really use that, uh, those principles and my mindset to get back on and say, you know what, thank you, but I am gonna take everything in my power to survive this, to go through it. And, and even the doctor said, I don't know what you're doing, Jackie, but it's working. And I love your positive attitude, it's really helping. So, you know, and the second doctor, uh, that was um, a bit more serious because uh, I was by my liver. Um, 
basically, uh, you know, I, I was basically a time bomb. I could have died without even knowing why I died. And uh, I had a third percent chance of basically living. Uh, the other two options were I die within two weeks with this new digestive made up digestive system that they, you know, had to do, or I am fed out of a tube for the rest of my life. So, you know, big, big, big decisions that, uh, you know, touched me Huge. to the core. Huge. And, uh, and the second time is when I, um, you know, I was laying in a hospital bed with all kinds of tubes. Uh, had a, at that point, a five month old baby, um, a brand new business, which I still have today, um, that has given me the amazing lifestyle that we have. And I was about to graduate college and being in a hospital bed with tubes, you know, doctor coming in and telling me those news. The only thing I could think of was I need to get out of here by next Thursday because I have finals. I'm graduating with honors. Oh. oh my goodness. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm laughing because I, my story is not, not exactly the same as yours, but I was hospitalized with multiple organ failure. And, and I was also of that mindset, like, I need out of here. <laughs> I, I can't stay here. I need out of here. I need out of here. And, um, but I also had this deep sense of this is not how my story ends this is not how my story ends and um it, it's very funny that you had um obviously an issue with the liver i had during that in the aftermath of my multiple organ failure i had a third of my liver removed um through a cancer scare that was so frightening to go through and and it is not the easiest thing um and so i applaud your bravery so tell me, how did you get into aviation? Was this a family thing or what, you know, cause you have such an interesting life. I mean, you're like, you're an author, you do airplanes, you run your own company, you know, uh, you are certainly a high achieving woman, but how did you get into aviation? I run two companies now, by the way, but uh, we'll talk about that a little later. Um, um, it was, you said something in our pre-conversation to this interview that really resonated with me. Um, I call them divine downloads. Mm. Uh, for me, a divine download is an idea that is designed for you, for your ecosystem to elevate your soul and to really you know, give you a pathway to your purpose. And that's how aviation came to me. I had never dreamt about being a pilot. I never thought in my situation in Mexico that I could um, come into the United States at the age of 14, not speaking a word of English. So obviously you need to speak English too to, to be able to do that. And there were so many milestones, so many layers of things that had to happen in order for me to be in the right moment at the right time to decide, or not to decide really, but to surrender to that divine download that came to me. Um, I had flown a Discovery flight uh, on a light sport aircraft with no doors uh, on a beautiful summer day. And to me, it became something spiritual because before that, I was actually racing on the track with my husband. We, uh, we love uh, cars and high speed and all that, and especially him. He kind of got me into it. But I participated in a lot of different competitions uh, with supercars and all that. And, uh, and then, you know, took this little Discovery flight and... Um, one day I was just driving and I just said, I'm going to be a pilot. Now, I mean, more than 80% of the people that become pilots as a hobby give up because it is the most difficult task of your life, you know, to be proficient in, in 49 areas of aviation mm. where you're not just like, okay, grabbing information from here to there, but you're, it's applied knowledge you know, apply knowledge that can save your life. Um, many, many hours of training and retraining and efficiency and proficiency and, and uh, you know, really practicing, you know, many maneuvers, high altitude, middle altitude, low altitude, landings, takeoffs, uh, different kinds. Um, and, you know, there were moments, you know, in my journey that I said, I think I'm too dumb. I don't think I can do this. This is like more difficult than I thought. And just to give you an idea, our Bible as pilots, um, it's pretty, you know, it's like 300 pages, let's say, right? Mm -hmm. 
two-thirds of that Bible, so to speak, written by attorneys for pilots um, is basically how you get your license. And approximately, um, actually one-third is how you get your license, right? And approximately the other two-thirds is how you lose your license. So that, uh, that just tells you the wow. intensity. Okay. But um, I've had just so many beautiful moments. And you know what my vision was when I was in my journey? Because there were moments I was like, oh my God, I don't think I could do this, you know? Um, and there were moments like, oh, I was born to fly. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, one, um, one vision that I had was, I am going to take my husband to launch on this plane. Uh, I'm going to fly him to launch. Like I just had that vision. And it, if I would give up, I'm like, I'm going to take my husband to launch. I saw it. I felt it until mm. it actually happened. And we get to this uh, skydiving airport, skydivers landing right next to the plane. You know, I'm trying to open up my, my pathway so that they don't land on top of my plane and um, get to the restaurant. And the, the server said, oh, great. Where do you guys come from? Oh, we flew in. You know, my husband says we flew in from this other airport. And uh, he says, you must be a great pilot. And uh, he said, actually, the pilot is my wife. <laughs> so that was like a micro moment of like. That was a female empowerment moment if I've yes. ever heard one. <laughs> yes. so beautiful. beautiful. And so since then, I've uh, completed more than 400 landings. I have taken up more than 100 people. Six people have decided, you know what, I want to pursue aviation. Young ladies have given out three scholarships along the journey, the last one being $5,000 to a young lady from my proceeds uh, from the Latinas in Aviation series in my magazine and teddy bears. And, you know, and I just, uh, I use every, like you said, every opportunity to serve. And it's, I love that. it still fills I my love heart. That. So, wow, what a journey, even just with the aviation. So, I mean, you, you inspire a lot of Latina women because this is something that I think is really, really important. Um, and this was something that was super important to me on my podcast that I, you know, that I represented a lot of women here. And I think that, you know, you came from Mexico, which is a, a poor country. You know, there is maybe sometimes not always all of those opportunities and things. And the service that you're providing, I think it's, it's so crucial that other little girls see somebody that is like them and thinks, wow, she can do this. You know, so I know that a big part of yours is, is giving back in service. And a big part of that has been through your books and, and things. Tell us a little bit about your books, because there is over 20 titles. <laughs> 24 to be exact. And, and, you know, in the middle of the pandemic, uh, launched uh, six, actually eight new titles um, under my name. And, um, you know, for my seventh book, I decided to bring a group of 10 Latina women, which ended up becoming 27. And at, at some point I said, well, if I don't cut this off, I'm going to be, you know, uh, it's going to be a Bible or something. <laughs> you know, it's going to be huge, an encyclopedia here. Um, so I decided to cut it at uh, 27. And I was just on this amazing journey, combining my experience as a marketer, combining my experience of writing six other books before, and really giving a platform for these women to share their stories. Um, we ended up um, creating an event for them so they can experience autographing a book for the first time. And um, we ended up with over 600 people. Um, that is another micro moment where my husband and I you know, looking and witnessing the beautiful stage and what we had uh, created and achieved um, really became a, um, a micro moment of expansion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is what it's all about because I feel like women with wealth, so many of us are already called to help humanity. So to have the resource of wealth, to have the resource of being able to create these amazing things, inspire other people, inspire other people to think, and especially other women to think, oh, wow, I could have something more. Mm -hmm. I think is such an important conversation in this world right now, because I remember the Dalai Lama saying, you know, that the, 
the world will be saved by the Western woman. And I really feel like what that really meant was, I just feel like women who have the access to what the Western woman has access to doesn't necessarily need need to be a Western woman. But what I feel is it's like we we have been given education like you were reading it for right like that is the privilege isn't it right and there are so many women around the world right now who don't read who haven't got access to the education that we perhaps have had and things and therefore we aren't aren't able to impact their communities in the way that they could and then it just takes one of us to show the way to light the candle to mm -hmm show this is possible this we can do this tell me a little bit about these stories that are shared inside these anthologies you're calling them isn't it yes i mean that same book that i launched uh you know several years ago uh, has become the largest collection of latina stories in a book anthology series in the world we are in, in 25 countries we have traveled to three continents sharing inspiration and connecting. Many businesses have come out of these connections uh, because I think when uh, people come with a sense of vulnerability, with a sense of um, opening up you know, their story, um, I think amazing bonds are created. Um, mm. I will say that you know, myself, I mean, I started reading those books at the age of four in Mexico. So, you know, wherever you are in the world, a book, could be a window to a, a whole new reality. And that's what I daydreamed about, you know, creating a pathway of success and elevating people along the journey. Um, and also, you know, people think, well, you have to have wealth in order to make an impact. But um, when I was 23, I didn't have any wealth. I was hospitalized. I was connected to every tube you can think of. And when the doctor walked away telling me, you know, you have a third percent chance of living a normal life, um, I looked up at the ceiling and I said, what am I here? Like, why am I alive? Like, there's two opportunities here in the last two years, multiple hospital visits. Like, why am I here? And I could, I could see, I could feel something that says to serve others. Mm -hmm. But I said, I have nothing. I have nothing to give. I'm broke. I mean, I have nothing, you know, like, I don't have any money. And that's when I started resorting to the knowledge that I had acquired. And I started to resort to my heart, my heart of service. So you don't really have a lot of money. In fact, most people in the world, and I think this why this uh, stories, um, you know, from survival and really facing adversity and coming back up, you know, um, have resonated with people because I only planned on one, one book with 10 women. And now it's nine, almost nine, with over 200 women in three continents and 25 countries. I never planned for that. But I think when a mission finds you, you surrender and you follow that and follow those divine downloads and, you know, focus on creating those micro moments of acceleration and expansion and exponential growth. And I think that's when, you know, you begin creating unimaginable, you know, opportunities, you open doors to create wealth. But... Um, a mentor once told me that most people live in four levels. Uh, one is the basic one is survival. And those people strive for the next level, which is stability, have enough money to pay their bills. And those people then say, I want to have success, which is basically what I have for stability, but nicer, <laughs> mm -hmm. bigger, you know, nicer brands. And then the people that a lot of times reach success, they say, you know what? I've had it all. I can access anything I want. I impact. Now I want to create significance. So it's all starts with an S, survival, stability, success, and significance. But right. he also told me that you don't have to have that. You don't have to follow that pathway. You can actually focus whatever you are in your financial world. Like you can focus on significance with a heart of gold, like with a heart of service, and you will achieve the success. You will achieve anything you want by helping enough people get what they want which is what Zig Ziglar said. <laughs> yes, it's one of my favorite quotes. It's one of my favorite quotes. I use it in a lot of my courses because I I love that quote, uh, that quote because it's just, you know, if you help enough people get what they want, you will get what you want. And that is the significance, isn't it? 
Mm -hmm. I love this because I started my journey um, really in survival mode, um, especially with the business that I have now. Um, we, I'd had my huge burnout, which would be in the multiple organ failure. Um, my family found themselves on welfare. We were, you know, we were hand to mouth uh, living. And, a, and I really just made this really, really powerful decision to be my own rescue. I realized that I had kind of, I was, you know, not full on playing the lottery, but, you know, when there was a big jackpot, I would always play it. And there was always this dream in the back of my mind that this would solve all my problems, you know? Mm -hmm. And then eventually I just decided, right, we, we got it. I got to get with a program here. I got to step up in my life like I've never stepped up before mm -hmm. and I kind of rapidly moved through all the stages but I realized you know and and during the whole progress that was all about what can I do to help other people and then of course the million dollar experiment which is my crazy idea to help create conscious millionaires in the world that can help so many people with that resource tell us a little bit about Obviously, lockdown, you create eight books, which is crazy in itself. It's an amazing achievement. What is on your cards going forward right now? What are you, um, because you traveled a lot, and I would imagine that you did lots of keynote speaking and things. Um, with COVID, the world's changed a little bit. What's your plans in the next few months? What are you up to? Well, you know, um, let me tell you first that in 2018, I also became a millionaire, uh, reaching the seven figures and beyond, um, which, you know, because it allowed me to be really focused on my two businesses, my enterprise. I created a board game based on the series Today's Inspired Latina, and um, I created a, a lot of other opportunities within that year. I uh, sent more teddy bears, flowers, chocolates, and books to people to cheer them up and spark a little bit of magic than ever before. Oh, and, I love that. And it's, uh, it's it kind of set me on a path of amazing growth. I, um, I have several books coming out this year to continue the series of Today's Inspire Latina, now also Today's Inspire Leader, Today's Inspire Young Latina, Volume 3, Today's Inspire Leader is also Volume 3, Today's Inspire Latina, Volume 9. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have another uh, really exciting uh, book that I'm going to be uh, probably announcing later in the year, but um, I am, um, you know, currently actually in Mexico talking about full circle, right? Um, my husband and I decided to become international investors, and we have been here since, since November, avoiding the harsh, you know, Chicago winter for the first time in 24 Good years. Time. I would be, um, I would be all over Mexico right now yeah. if I could. <laughs> yeah. and, and for me, you know, what it means to come back this year and to look at what the opportunities lie right in front of me, um, you know, to expand um, as I explore again, you know, another, another facet, another area, another, you know, spoke of, you know, growth and, um, and magic is, um, you know, uh, being able to, like I said, invest in, in properties internationally. And then for me, the significance of coming back to my country, successful, ready to serve, ready to elevate women in my own country and ready to show them and pave the way. Um, I've donated a lot of my time here uh, to give workshops and to give productivity workshops and inspiration and things of that nature to really help them with their mindset, you know, because I'm not an expert. I'm not a coach. I'm not none of that stuff, but I am perhaps an example for some people that want to follow a path of significance, abundance, and service. So if I can be of service, um, you know, I, I, I'm always, I arrive to a place like here in Mexico and I said, how am I going to serve this community? You know, when I ask God to guide me and say, how am I supposed to serve in this particular area, what are the needs? So I've been asking a lot of people, what are the needs in this area, in this geographical area? What, um, you know, what do I need to, you know, to, to, to serve? I never think, oh, what am I gonna take out of here? Like what, you know, cause I'm complete, I'm in oneness, um, but I'm always ready to, to give and serve. So that's what I'm that. discovering right that. now and I love it. <laughs> 
It is. It's amazing. And it takes you on an adventure when you're in that mindset of service. It takes you on an adventure. And I've always found, you know, that what you give out is obviously what you receive back in. So as you serve, you receive service to a degree back in. And it's really beautiful. It's a, I call it the great exchange. It's like you exchange something valuable out into the world and the world exchange back to you something that is valuable to you, like a certain lifestyle or the way that you want to live and feel free and make your own hours and all of these things, which I think are so powerful and important for women. Um, when you, you also run a publishing company. So tell us a little bit about the publishing company that you run and how that all came about. Cause that was kind of like an accidental publishing company, accidental on purpose. <laughs> Yes, I mean, like I said, I uh, I had published uh, six of my books with three different publishing houses, and um, more and more I started getting requests from just random people saying, "How do you publish a book? Can you give me some advice?" And uh, my husband noticed that I was becoming kind of like the Mother Teresa of book publishing and uh, advice, you know, and he's like. You know, we already had a marketing, a successful marketing agency that, you know, was not at the level that it is now, but it certainly, you know, at that moment in time, it was growing and we already had a lot of the things that, number one, the experience of publishing six books with, you know, interacting with three publishing companies, but also the experience of doing all the graphics, which my husband, you know, takes care of, you know, for the last 14 years with our marketing agency. And we've been working together for that long. Um, and then, you know, just like the experience with the content, you know, the content specialists that we had on our team, you know, writing uh, blogs and articles for clients. Now, you know, we could just convert it to writing books or editing books. Um, so it became a sort of a natural pathway. And of course, with the background of marketing and PR, it sort of like exploded a lot of different amazing opportunities with that. So I was, you know, ready to create something that was author focused because before I'm a publisher, I'm an author. So I wanted to create something that was beautiful, that created a journey of magical encounters um, so that first time authors especially felt like they were taken care of, felt the trust, felt like yeah. somebody had their best interest in mind. And that's what, you know, how Fig Factor Media was born. Um, I took it to five figures within the second year and uh, where, you know, we doubled from 2018 to 2019 and grew about 56% in 2020. And the demand that we have from authors around the world is uh, very inspiring, <laughs> I would say. I love it. I love it. <laughs> we talked a little bit about in the pre recording to this interview we talked a little bit about other you know like how shocking some of the publishing services are because they can you know they really are very expensive for not a lot and I find that myself when I went to publish as well I was quite you know and I was and I, I was so lucky because I was already business savvy but I would imagine, you know, I can't imagine what it would feel like when somebody is not business savvy and thinks, oh, well, this is just the price it is and commits to these huge big contracts and things. And, um, and I was, you know, and I think it's so lovely that you really thought about the author and you hold them in that space and create something really beautiful for them. Because I certainly didn't feel, um, you know I didn't feel very much when I was reaching out to these companies that offered to help you get your book published that some of them were they were quite unscrupulous um and and they didn't offer very much and uh, and then well I've, I had one in particular that really chased me down and eventually I had to say please can you stop phoning <laughs> And so it's great to know that you are doing this and you're helping authors get on the right track as opposed to getting caught in what I call the vanity publishing, where they really, you know, some of them are, it's quite, yeah, it's a, a funny and, energy. And I've actually saved uh, quite a few authors from that. Um, and, uh, you know, with my background in marketing and PR and, and really, you know, I think what has helped me uh, over the last six years, because coincidentally this is when I started picked up my journey in 20 
2015 when I decided to become a pilot. And then in 2014 is when I, the end of 2014 is when I, uh, you know, created my publishing house. But it's interesting because I take our authors on this beautiful journey of looking at a 108 degree view rather than being so narrow focused that, oh, I gotta get this book done. I make them see a bigger picture and say, you know what? You have a book. How can we repurpose that book? Because this book is not just a book, it's your legacy. And it could be diversified in a multitude of ways, like a journal, an online course, uh, a board game, like I did, you know? like So I take them and I expand their wings and they're like, wow, I didn't know I could do that. You know, and I think um, when you, like I said, when you do it with their best interest in mind, that is when the pathway of trust and that connection with trust is created. And, um, you know, and, and I don't, you know, you come from a place of abundance, right? Um, even when I didn't have anything, I would like sit outside of a client's office and I would just, you know, take a deep breath and I just, you know, would meditate and pray, you know, God, please give me plant abundance in my heart. I know I need this client to pay my bills. I know I need, but you know what? At this moment, just eradicate all this scarcity might be in my mind and just plant abundance. And I would pray about it and I would walk into the meeting with the best of me, the best of ideas, the best of my service, the best of that I had to offer, even if that best or the best ideas had nothing to do with the services that I provided. And that's when people say, wow, I trust you because you're not in for the money. Like everybody else that is pursuing the mighty dollar, the, you know, the pound, the, you know, whatever currency you're in, you know what? And when you do that, when you surrender, you know, to abundance and let all these things go, the only thing that's left is a pure heart of service. And from there, you can create and change the world. I love this because this is something that I talk about, although I use different wording, but I talk a lot about lack consciousness and lack consciousness mm -hmm. makes us as human beings behave in quite weird ways and we get very uptight and we get into this place of it has to be this client, this client has to say yes. If they don't say yes, it will be the end of me, you know? And it's this, it's very, very desperate energy. It's absolutely the thing that repels abundance. Yes. And, and it is when, you know, when I built the wealth that I have now, I knew I could not afford to operate from that energy. And I literally mean that I could not financially, mentally, spiritually, physically, afford to operate from that way of being so even though money was short even though money was tight I would always get on a discovery call with a client a potential client and I would before the discovery call I would pray and I would say to myself you have permission to say no if this is not a fit for you and it was just this you know like to give myself that permission that I was there in service of them and if it was not a fit it was okay for me to walk away no matter what no matter what was going on in my house and in my family no matter what if my kids needed shoes and I was like I don't know how I'm going to pay for them but I feel like that it was integral to me being able to build my company and to be able to have the impact that I've had in my company. And I love that you have your version of this of where you were like, I know right now it doesn't look great in the bank account, but plant that abundance in my heart. Let me speak my truth. Let me show up as my best. Because what happens when we're in that lack consciousness as well is we hold back. There's greatness there. But we're like, no, 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 they have to pay for the greatness. And it's like, but it, if you let it flow, you're saying to the universe, I trust you. I trust there's going to be more greatness. I trust that there's going to be more stuff coming through. And this has been a big part inside the million dollar experiment where we're really trying to get people to switch off the lack consciousness and to switch into this abundant consciousness, even though the bank account in the beginning may not reflect that but it soon will if we keep coding for that energy. And I love that you brought this up because um, 
for me personally, and I don't know if you agree with this, and I'd love to hear your take on this, but lack consciousness for me personally is ultimately what's wrong with the world. It is, you know, people, you know, a lot of people have a lot of funny ideas about money. You know, they think that money is the root of all evil and they think that, but actually I would say that it isn't money that is the root of all evil and it isn't, but it's actually the, the energy of lack. And it's not necessarily just the energy of lack of money. It could be lack of love, lack of purpose, lack of anything. And it's really what, in my humble opinion, creates like um, a mean spirit inside you almost. And I think this is why humans do such horrible things to each other sometimes is through the lack. And if we can have that, you know, I, I'm going to use that as a prayer, plant a seed of abundance in my heart. You know, that is so beautiful. And if we can, and it's an energy that we switch into, it's our birthright, we can have it even when all around us is nothing but lack. What, what is your take on all that? You know, I've been through that journey, you know, coming from um, physically and, uh, you know, contextually a, a world of lack, you know, um, you know, having been born in Mexico and, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of abundance in Mexico and there's a lot of poverty as well. I was sort of, you know, stuck in the middle, um, but, you know, always witnessing how people that had money were very elite, you know, elite elitist I don't know how to say it in yeah. yes uh and really um like downgrading or being condescending to people that didn't have money um and, and many times I was part of that mix you know even though I wasn't in extreme poverty I I was you know considered middle class like lo probably lower middle class you know growing up and and really you know struggling to make ends meet and sometimes wanting things you know like shoes and you know, my, for Christmas, you know, my, my cousins would get the most beautiful toys and I would get the most basic toys. And, you know, you can't help it, but compare like, oh, they have money and I don't. And um, so it was always a struggle, you know, to see things physically and to see how there were um, big differences between money that, you know, people that had money and how mean they were to people that didn't have any money and how, you know, humiliated and, you know, in, in many occasions, and it's it's seen a lot in Mexico still, you know, and a big divide, you know, between, you know, the rich and the poor. So I grew up with that, you know, kind of mentality. But what saved me is the implant or the, you know, the intake of amazing knowledge, you know, because, um, you know, when people think about money, sometimes they think about immediate gratification, you know, I, I want to just make it, I want to make, you know, I, I want to have this money or, or sometimes, you know, the, the belief that, you know, if you have money, you're going to be mean, you're going to be, you know, uh, like, you're you going to like instantly turn into oh, some complete ass yeah. overnight. Exactly. And um, I had to sort of come to, come to terms with my own journey with money. Um, as I started um, getting a taste of financial abundance, um, I would, you know, every step of the way, I would question myself, like, for example, the house, I live in the house of my dreams in Chicago, uh, far beyond, I mean, you know, what my family or my husband's family has, we're the youngest, you know, uh, as far as like the couple, you know, the youngest couple, and um, I, um, you know, to have achieved, you know, physically what we have, when I moved in, I literally cried because I'm like, this is too much. Like, this is huge. This is a huge house. It's beyond beautiful. It's like a mini mansion. Like, I, I, you know, I've never experienced anything like this, you know, or when I, when my husband bought me my first, like, car, you know, this beautiful, brand new, like, here, you deserve this car. And like, I don't deserve it. I, mean, I so I was resisting wealth and abundance. Yeah. For you know, for years, I was like battling with those inside beliefs. You know, the limiting beliefs that were holding me back and taking me back to my childhood. Oh, you know, but people that have money, they're mean. Oh, they're mean. They're mean. And then one day, I say, you know what? I'm going to surrender because as I started getting a little bit of taste of money, my personality didn't change. My my heart of service never changed. I realized that I was actually becoming a lot nicer with money, you know, because not only did I have an idea to serve, 
but you know, if it required money, I could do it. I mean, not saying that I have unlimited, but you know what? It comes to me effortlessly. It yeah. comes to me like a magnet from my heart of service, from being able to say, you know what? I'm here to elevate you. And when people feel that, they trust. And I've never proven them wrong. You know, I said, I'm, I I'm love, here to serve it. Love in every that. step of the way, you know, even when they were not looking, you know, making decisions for them to, to take care of them. Um, and that's how I came to grasp, you know, with this concept of money, because now that I have properties here in Mexico, my friend arrived, you know, uh, yesterday and I said, guess what, you can stay at my brand new property, which just built, you can stay there. So last night I went to deliver the keys oh to her and her husband. And as I was touring this place and explaining, you know, they were blown away. They said, Jackie, we're so proud of you. Because sometimes it takes somebody else to see the progress, yeah. see what you've been able to achieve to, you know, to notice your so own. Gorgeous. So gorgeous. I love something that you said there that mm -hmm. with more money, I became a nicer person. And this is why I feel so like really passionate about eradicating lack consciousness because the lack part of our brains it takes up a lot of bandwidth mm -hmm. and I really do feel that when that bandwidth of how will I survive is not a thing in your mind it is just it's just of course I'm going to survive it of course it's easy and you're the way you speak about money it comes effortlessly I feel the same now but you can be more you you can show up as how you want. It is not a case of, oh God, can I afford to help this person or not help this person? You know, you don't even have to get jammed up like that. It's, you can tap into a more powerful energy, which is, do I desire to help here? Yes or no. And it's so much more powerful than making it about, whether you have the resource or you don't have the resource and, oh my God, and how are the kids going to eat next week? And none of that. And I really feel like, and this is one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about helping to demystify the energy around wealth, to demystify the law of attraction when it comes to wealth and to really help people to tap in and realize like, this is something that you can tap in, whether you have $1 in the bank or whether it's minus $1,000 or whether you have $20,000 in the bank, it matters not because we can tap into this power, all of us. Tell me a little bit about the books that you were reading when you were little, because we, I don't know if we caught that on the, on the beginning of this podcast or if it was in the pre-chat, but you were talking about filling your mind with all these incredible authors and you couldn't wait until you were kind of slightly more older to start applying. Tell us a little bit about that. Classics, uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Love he spent 20 years interviewing the top most successful people in the world and captured 13 characteristics that they all shared. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, brilliant book that I've read over and over again. You can find infographics online, the audio version, you know, amazing everywhere. This, um, the classic. first person that he interviewed, Andrew Carnegie. Mm -hmm. um, not far from my home, there's a uh, ski boat castle, which uh, Andrew Carnegie owned. And I had the very great pleasure of doing sessions inside his office. And I was just like soaking it up. It was like so soaking in all the abundance. Um, another book is Dale Carnegie's um, How to Influence Friends and Win People. Okay. Um, yeah, I love that. You know, it's uh, 31 Amazing Principles of Human Relations because everything you'll achieve will be with people, for people, and through people. So if you can master this ability to connect with people, you know, and have, you know, beautiful human relations that you haven't made. Um, and third, um, Zig Ziglar's books. He's got several, um, you know, about motivation and sales and all that. Um, so I, you know, had an opportunity to um, meet him in person uh, before he passed away. And also, um, uh, you know, work uh, very closely with his son, Tom Ziegler, now the president of Ziegler Enterprises, and have him endorse uh, two of my books. He actually gave my memoir a Z+. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. 
What an endorsement. Amazing. Yes. <laughs> oh, Jackie, I have loved chatting to you so much. Tell people where they can find all about all the things. And before you go, hold up the magazine that you've just had printed as well, if you still got it there. Yes, absolutely. Well, I, uh, you can find me. I think the best way to find me is JackieCamacho.com. J-A-C-K-I-E. C A M A C H O dot com because you'll see the pathway to all my inner, you know, like my enterprise, you know, of inspiration. You'll see all the links to all the different pages, the marketing house, the publishing house, and my social media. And uh, this is my first Amazing. magazine, it's a worldwide magazine to elevate Latinas in aviation. We are the rarest people in the industry. Latinas in okay. aviation, pilots, okay. veterans, uh, administrators, all Latinas that happen to be so passionate about uh, aviation. 92 amazing pages of, of magic. We launched it on uh, International Women's Day and uh, we are going to do two issues a year. Um, and all the proceeds of the book, my little teddy bear that fly, is resembling, it, it resembles some, uh, the little teddy bear that flies with me. I've given away over 875. Um, we sell them on the website too. And all of that goes to support the next generation of Latinas in aviation. Amazing. So and you hand out scholarships and everything for that as well. Absolutely. We just gave out a $5,000 scholarship to a young pilot uh, seeking to get her next certification. Yes, that is so amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing your incredible journey, your incredible story. I am so touched and just keep shining your light and keep doing what you're doing because there is so many more women out there that need to hear your message. Thank you and keep doing what you're doing. Keep spreading the light. And uh, I enjoyed our conversation and so much of the synchronicities that united us. Thank you so yes. much. So beautiful.